Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Veronica. Thank you so much for clicking the link to watch my video. Let's get started with today's video. This video is going to be really long and I'm so sorry, but you guys asked for this and I'm going to tell you, I'm going to dish the good. Alright, so if you can tell by this title, we're going to talk about COT. COT stands for Commission Officer Training. I got a lot of questions um, about my other video, which was basically about joining and what my career full update is. And I got asked several times by you guys to talk about COT. So, like I said, COT is Commission Officer Training. It's actually held at Maxwell Air Force Base, which is in Alabama, which is actually close to my dad's side of the family, my grandparents, so I did get to catch up with a lot of family when I went. It lasts about four and a half to five weeks. Um, it's basically like your BMT. So if you're enlisted, you go to BMT. If you are a medical officer, chaplain, or JAG, which is basically a lawyer, you will go to COT. Um, there's a reason I know a lot of people said, oh, I've been Googling and trying to find a lot of research and I can't on COT, on Air Force COT. And there's a reason because, you know, um, they want to give you some ambiguity and we can't, I'm not going to give you every little thing because that's a part of the experience, a part of it, um, of the unknown. And I hate the unknown because believe me, you, I was so annoyed that I couldn't find anything because I'm a researcher too and I Google and I look up YouTube videos and there wasn't really any videos. So that's why I'm doing this video for you guys. I want to break it all down. Okay, so what you need to pack, um, basically pretend like you're going to an apartment, an empty apartment or dorm and you need to bring everything to live in that dorm slash apartment. So you're going to have a roommate. I luckily did not. Yay! There's people who actually, I don't want to say, I don't really know why they weren't there, but there was people who ended up not showing up. Um, so I got lucky enough to have no roommate, and I was praying to God that I would have either no roommate or a great roommate because that can live or break your experience. Um, it does help and come in handy when you have a roommate because you can study together, you can do all this other stuff, but my wingman, um, Jolie Beasley, shout out to her, um, Captain Beasley, um, me and her both had no roommates and we were in the same flight and yeah, it just worked out and we were the best of friends, so that worked out. Um, so like I said, you're going to pretend like you're going to a dorm or apartment. You're going to bring, what is it called? Laundry detergent. You're going to bring dryer sheets. You're going to pack your undergarments. You're going to pack your toiletries. Um, and the biggest question I get is, should I bring my military clothing, like my ABUs, my boots, and all of that? Here's my answer. It's like, it's a, it's a yes and no. So I showed up with nothing except for my civvies which are civilian clothes and I did fine but the most annoying thing was going to the shop at BX or whatever they want to call it um, that's just for cot um, trainees and having to buy everything. I mean the first day you're there within the first several days you're gonna do it's called a bag drag and you're gonna drag this green duffel bag that they make you buy um, and you're gonna have to shove all of your clothes not shove all of your clothes. They're going to put, they're going to give you a list of items, male or female. You're going to, if you're a female or if you're a male, you're going to buy everything that is on that list. If you already have it, you don't need to put it in your bag. Here's another thing that my recruiter did not tell me, and thank God I have a excellent, awesome father who is retired military. You have to purchase everything that day. So my total ended up being like $1,600. Luckily, my dad gave me his credit card. <laughs> I'm not spoiled. Well, I'm spoiled, but I pay for my own stuff. But that was like my dad's gift for joining. Um, he paid for all of my uniforms, all of my clothes, every little thing he paid for. And my recruiter didn't tell me I had to purchase all of my uniforms. But as an officer, you have to purchase all of your uniforms. And so for me, coming off of... Um, I wish I would have known that because I had money, but I also knew I was coming here to, you know, do a new apartment. I had to buy furniture, so I was kind of irked because if had I known that, I would have been saving, like, extra. Um, so know that you have to pay for everything you buy there. Um, they're going to have you buy, bring a lock, like a combination lock, because they're going to make you buy that. Um, and I forgot what we used our lock for. I can't remember. Oh, there's, like, a safety drawer in your dorm room that you put all of your 
important things like money, your wallet, your phone. You can't carry around your phone with you. You'll get phone privileges later on. When you come back to your dorm room, you can use it, but it's so late at night. Like I said in the other video, there's like no point. Um, you're so busy. You're studying. The first few days, you're so, it's kind of like, it's, it varies for different people, but I feel like I was like, I feel like for me personally, the first week was the best week. <laughs> We started to get rules. It wasn't, it was strict because they want to kind of scare you and break you down, but it was like, eh, it was like your first week, you know? So no one hates the first week of school. They try not to make you hate it. Um, don't worry about getting your CAC card, anything like that. You'll get your CAC there, all of that stuff. So don't stress out about it. So my advice is bring, I would say bring like one or two uniforms that are already fully done, sewed on everything, so you don't have to pin it on, but don't worry, don't stress if you don't have it, because I showed up with nothing, and it worked out because I got everything sewed on there. The Maxwell ladies who work in the alteration shop, is re they're really awesome, and they know how to sew on things, but because you're there with your whole cot class, it, it took them like four weeks, not even four weeks, because I'm there for four weeks, it took them like two or three weeks before I actually had a uniform that was fully put on together because you can't give them all of your uniforms because you have to wear one every single day. And so that's why I recommend bringing um, two uniforms that are done, one or two that are actually done, and then get two more made so that way you can have like four or five uniforms. And get the elastic put in your pants. In my personal opinion, I'm not about to blast my pants every day. And keep in mind, you're waking up at 0430. You have to be dressed and ready to go. You're, the first thing you put on is PT clothes. But when you get back, you have to shower and um, put on your uniform. And what saved me so much time was not having a roommate. So I never had to wait for her. You know how girls are. I never had to wait for someone to wash their hair, wash their body, and shave. It was just me. And brushing your teeth and all that stuff is outside of your actual bathroom bathroom but using the bathroom never had to wait for anyone I could go to the bathroom whenever I wanted um, sleeping you know all that stuff so it was just it was really nice but it is a part of the experience of having a roommate so um, just be prepared for that so I'm gonna talk now more about the actual once you're at cot everything you're basically going to be you're gonna, you're gonna wake up at 0 4 30 usually or be down at the ground I can't remember what the exact time to be down there and ready to go but I know 0 4 30 is when my I usually set my alarm for about 4 or 3 30 and then I'll be down and ready to go by 0 4 30 you have to wear a safety belt you have to wear your PT clothes and don't worry if you don't have any PT clothes because you're gonna do that on your first week like I said you're gonna do a back drag so basically you have to wake up work out for an hour, hour and a half, I think, and then you come back, shower, and get ready for the day. The whole time you're there, except for the last week, you're going to march in a flight, a squadron, you're going to march. You can't walk normal and go downstairs and just be normal. You have to, like, march in a flight. And if you don't know what I mean, um, just wait till you get there. Don't worry. There, like I said, I'm not going to tell you guys everything so that way you're prepared. I want you to be prepared, but I don't want you to know everything because then it like kind of ruins the experience if you know everything. You have to sit in modified attention. So you're in a training campus, so you got to sit in modified attention. Um, anytime someone high ranking walks up, you need to salute them because you'll have your ranks pin on you. Um, I was in the Cobra Squadron, so shout out to the Cobras if you're watching this. I don't even know if they're going to keep the squadrons the same, but you'll be broken up into three squadrons, and then you're going to be broken up into flights, and your flights depend on how big your cot class is. So I think we had, did we have 16 flights? I don't know, but I was in Lima Flight, so yes, I know someone asked that question, you will be broken up into flights. So I'm going to start answering some questions because I feel like this video is going to be super long and if I don't start hurry up and making this. Okay, so someone asked, is it true you're grouped in a flight and each person has a particular role or job within that flight? Yes, it is true. So you're going to be grouped in a flight, you're going to have a certain job, and I had the logistics job, which ironically I am now the logistics readiness flight commander at my base. Um, so pick a job that you really like, but it honestly doesn't matter because you're all going to be doing stuff and try to help people out within your flight. If you know they have to do a lot of work, be a good wingman and help every single person out. I will say the most difficult jobs is when you're the flight, the 
it's not a, called a flight commander, but it's like the student flight commander. So you have your real flight commander, and then you have someone who's in your flight who's like the president or the flight commander. So you have that job. You have the assistant flight commander, and then I think the admin job are the most stressful because, and I don't say stressful in a bad way. There's good stress and there's bad stress. Yes, you're going to get a lot of face time with leadership, but at the same time, you're going to be working really hard. And I know the admin of our group, she worked really, really hard and she had to write a lot of memorandums. But writing memos is good practice for the real Air Force. So someone else asked, sorry, the same person asked, is there any rhyme or reason as to who you may be grouped with? No, I have no idea how they do the selection. Honestly and ironically, in my flight, we had three MSCs, which was awesome because we went to HSA together and we became really, really close. But I have no idea how they pick. And I don't even think, I think that was kind of done like at random. I don't know how they pick or group people in a flight. If you have a good friend who's going or you link up with someone on Facebook, because now they have the Facebook groups that you can go to. Um, and you're like, hey, we're going to meet. Let's try and get in the same flight. Don't even try. Don't worry about it. It doesn't work like that. It's at random. Um, so this person asked another question. Did you go with other airmen in your same field of work or were you all mixed up? I did not know these airmen beforehand. Um, but yes, I had two other airmen who were in my same AFSC. Um, and yeah. But everyone else, I mean, you're all mixed up. So we had... MSCs, we had nurses, we had physician, we had, do we have a physician? Yeah, we had PAs, physicians, um, we had a pharmacist, and we had a chaplain and a lawyer. So everyone is all mixed up. They put a little bit of everyone everywhere and they put a little bit of rank everywhere. Is the classroom learning part difficult? Yes and no. So I am not used to military testing. Um, so I did have to take a couple of tests over again because you have to get a certain grade like a high B and I would be missing like one question away from a B like they would say passing is you can only miss two and I would miss three and I'm a really smart girl so I'm not ashamed to admit this but yes I struggled a little bit with the learning classroom stuff just because I'm not used to military testing and I'm not used to how they ask questions like how when they ask and you'll see this when you take tests how they ask questions to me is strange. It's a lot of scenario questions and application. It's not like definition. It's not, I don't know. It's just not how my brain worked. And I was, I had a super high GPA in, all throughout college and high school. So it's just weird. But I also think the stress that you're under mentally also has something to do with it. The biggest tip for me was writing everything out and sticking to your study guide. I know they say, oh, they may ask questions off of your study guide. No. Stick to your study guide. Study your study guide. Be able to recite it and regurgitate it forwards and backwards, and you'll do fine on the test. You have to average a 75, I think. I don't remember what the number is, but if you, if you don't pass too many tests, you do get sent home. But don't stress out, you're fine. But I will say, know your Otsman. Before you get there, you want to know your Otsman. I didn't know it. <laughs> In fact, I read it like the day before, or and actually on the plane um, to test, and I did fine, but know your Otsman. Um, someone asked, did you prepare at all before going to COD by reading books or anything about the United States Air Force? No, I did not. Um, I was too busy, and I really wasn't... Um, prepared at all for the cot experience. I mean, I was prepared in a sense of, I can do this, but I was not, I didn't study about the Air Force, I didn't read anything, and like I said before, I basically read stuff on the plane. I do not recommend that. I was a procrastinator in this situation, but honestly, I did fine, but I don't think you need to stress about the Air Force. In my opinion, even going back into it, if I had to do it over again, I still wouldn't study before because you'll have study time, and to be honest, are you really going to study three months before and remember all the same information because they may change questions, they may change the material. So in my opinion, once you're accepted into COT, you'll get this link and it'll have the Otsman on there. Study that and you'll be fine. Okay, so someone asked me, do you go straight from COT to HSA? So this person is an MSC or going in the Health Services Administration field. So yes, I went straight from caught to HSA. However, there was a week break where I reported back to my base because HSA and caught are designed to be a week or two apart. 
So it's never going to be caught straight to HSA. It's going to be caught, go back to your base, and you do have to go back to your base or else you are reported as AWOL or they're going to take away your leave. And I did not want to use any leave, so I went back to my base for a week and then I went to HSA for like five or six more weeks. So yes. Um, and it helps to network at COT, whatever your field is, network, because more than likely you'll be going to a follow-on school. They don't call it tech school for officers, but yes, it's basically tech school. How long was HSA? Um, HSA is about four, five weeks. I can't remember exactly, but it's four or five weeks. And then do you know how often they have COT? Oh, HSA, okay, I remember. HSA is actually four weeks. And then you'll do two weeks of your focus. So I'm a logistics readiness flight commander. So I went to HSA for four weeks. And then straight after HSA, I had to go into my logistics, my logistics core class for two weeks. And I'm also a readiness flight commander because I'm dual hatted. So now I'll be heading actually back to the schoolhouse in a couple of weeks um, for two weeks of readiness training. So someone asked me to talk about are you, do you do combatives in COT? So COT is for medical personnel, and I'm smiling and smirking when I say this because people think that the medical part is not real Air Force, and they're entirely wrong. We are just as capable. We look sharp in our uniform, um, and don't ever let being a medic come before being an airman. Um, so I say all that to say you do do a little bit of combative stuff, but it's not going to be like you're going to see OTS, BOT, and I'm missing one, TFOT, you're going to see them training. They're officers too, but they can't put on rank until after. So they actually have to salute us because we're already commissioned officers. Uh, we did this course called, is it LRS? It's like a leadership course, and they it's literally like the movies where you see people doing these boot camp weird obstacle courses that they design together, and they give you like a mission card. You read your mission card, and you have to solve it. Um, so they do that, and I thought that was probably the most interactive. It wasn't, it was fun for me, but I will say, if you have someone in your group who likes to take charge and talk over people, then you might suffer grading-wise, because everything is graded there, and you need to get a passing grade. Um, I did have someone in my group uh, kind of take over me and talk over me, so my flight commander, not my personal flight commander, but a flight commander marked me down grading wise because you're supposed to speak up. Officers are meant to lead. We're meant to to lead people and be able to lead all types of people. So that's why you're graded more in leadership skills and not necessarily followership. But followership is just as important as leadership. So you have to have both. You have to be able to follow in a group and you have to be able to lead when you need to lead a group. Um, a lot of people ask me about what do they actually teach. And I call it, they teach a lot of stuff. Honestly, I can't remember everything because I'm not going to lie. I fell asleep in some of the lectures and they do tap you on the shoulder and make you stay in the back of the auditorium. But number one, it's cold in there. And I think they keep it cold so you'll wake up, but it, no. Number two, you're up at 0430 and you're working out. You literally see the sunrise and it's, and I don't know if you guys have ever been to Alabama since my grandma my grandparents are from there. I've been to Alabama many times. It's hot. In August, I went in August to Cot and I was sweating. I was sweating so bad. I was dark. I didn't look like myself. I didn't wear any makeup. It was just, I looked crazy, okay? Crazy. Oh, I forgot to mention this. You are going to be marched around by not only your flight commander, but there are NTIs there, so there there are senior enlisted individuals who will help train the officers because you can't be an officer without your senior enlisted folks. They are the backbone of the Air Force, your NCOs, um, and your senior NCOs, and they're just amazing. So you're going to meet some really nice TIs. Befriend them, be nice to them, get on your good side. They will help you out because they know how to look sharp in uni a uniform. They know how to present themselves well. If you need help marching because you'll spend a lot of time doing like flight competitions and marching with your flight. Oh, I forgot to mention the food. So everyone always asks about the food. The food is, honestly, there it's hit and miss. Some days I'm like, ooh, this food is good. Other days it's just not good. Um, but I had hiccups, I kid you not. 
every single day of cot because we have to eat so fast. You have to eat in about 10 minutes because you get a 30 minute lunch, 20 minutes is spit in a line, 10 minutes you're finally sitting down and then you have to like scarf it down. And you are so hungry because you're ex exasperating all this energy throughout the day. You're marching, you're sweating, you're in full ABUs in Alabama sun. I mean, I was dark. Even my dad was like, Veronica. <laughs> um, another thing to know is a lot of people think they're going to have so much freedom when they get there and you don't. You go from phase zero to phase, I think the phase four, is it phase four or phase six? I don't know. The last phase is like you're completely free. You can do whatever you want. Just make sure you show up at the required events, but you won't even get to freedom until your last week. Literally the last week is when they finally upgraded us to a higher phase, meaning we could not eat at modified attention. We could actually talk while we have meals because before then you can't talk when you eat. You have to sit at modified attention keeping your heels at a 45 degree angle. You stand at attention like everything is like you're in training camp. Um, and you'll still have to do that throughout COT, but once you reach a certain phase, it's more lax and they treat you like a peer as opposed to a trainee. Um, but we didn't hit that phase until the last week, and he said that was early. And I don't understand how that was early, because literally my dad was flying out the next day, and we were still, like, walking around like zombies. You have to wear a camel back. I don't know where mine is. I buried it because it has bad memories, but... Everyone knows if you have a camel pack on, you belong to Cot, and so if they see you somewhere you shouldn't be, they're going to tell on you, and that's just what they do. The best thing was graduating. You'll have to do like a parade practice, and you'll have to do a dorm room inspection practice. I know a lot of people say in their previous years at Cot, there's a housekeeper, and there's this and that. That Cot doesn't exist anymore. It's just like everyone else's training experience you're going to be yelled at you're going to have to they don't make you do push-ups or anything like that but you will have to exercise heavily my body was so snatched at caught yeah i had a really good i had a really good experience it wasn't easy um stressed me out people drove me crazy in my flight um for sure but we are very we're all really close still other than that i don't think i have very much else i feel like i explained to you guys in great depth what's going on and i just want to thank you guys so much for watching this video if you have any more questions please let me know down below or message me because i don't think i'm going to be filming any more cop videos just because i feel like i talked about everything and remember there is some ambiguity to things so but anyways thank you guys so much for watching my video this is going to complete my cot experience video. I hope you guys enjoy this video. Give it a thumbs up. Let me know if you have any more questions. And also check out my other videos. Um, they will be there here on the screen for you guys to click and fulfill your pleasure. And I will catch you guys in my next video. Peace. <laughs>